guy. So um, we've got our magnitude represented by the length and then the direction is our angle here made with the positive x-axis. Standard measurement just like we've been uh, doing so far. Now a key to vectors is knowing their components. They're the pieces that make up the vector, um, the horizontal component and the vertical component. Um, so we'll break that down on the next slide. Arrows on each end, um, but we use those to express the vector in terms of its horizontal and its vertical components. Um, so it's like it's X and Y coordinate, but a vector is not a point in space. It is that arrow, that ray. Um, so we use the pointy brackets to distinguish this between, uh, from a point. Okay, um, so right here I've just drawn a vector that's in the first quadrant so that we can talk about its components. Uh, without having to worry about positives and negatives, we'll get into that in a minute, but right now we just need to um, look at it in terms of its x and its y. Okay, um, so the vector itself is there in blue. Um, that is, of course, again, once again, that would be the magnitude is the blue portion. Okay, the green portion is the vertical component. Uh, otherwise known as the Y. Okay, if we're just looking at the tip of this vector as a point, then that would be the same as the Y coordinate. Um, the purple part would be the X coordinate. And our angle, like it has been, is always between um, that and the positive X axis. So, if we're trying to come up uh, with an expression and the magnitude uh, is represented with the symbol, it's a V in absolute value bars, okay, that represents our magnitude. <coughs> so if we know the magnitude and we know the angle of this vector, then we can break it down into its components. So if we wanted to find the x component, the x here in relationship to that angle would be the adjacent side and the magnitude is the hypotenuse. So if we were trying to find the x component, we would set up our trig ratio using the cosine. So the cosine of the angle is equal to the adjacent. We're going to use x over the hypotenuse, which is the magnitude. If we want to solve that for the x component, we multiply both sides by the magnitude. So our x component can be found by multiplying the magnitude by the cosine of the angle. You will be given that information. You will be told the magnitude, you will be told the angle, and you'll need to break it into components. Now, the vertical component, the y, is opposite of our angle there, so we would use sine. Sine of the angle is equal to the opposite, specifically in this case it's y, over the hypotenuse, in this case the magnitude. Solve for the y. Similarly, we can find the y component by multiplying the magnitude by the sine of the angle. Now, in some cases we are told the components and we are asked to find the angle. So let's think about this case. Um, if we're told the x and y components and we want to find the angle, we can set up our tangent ratio because the components are the opposite and the adjacent. So we can set up that the tangent is equal to the y over x. If we're solving for theta, 
then we have to use the inverse tangent of the y over the x and that will tell us what the angle is if we are given the components. So, let's just crunch some numbers right here. If we are told a vector V has a direction angle of 115 degrees and a magnitude of 6, let's draw the picture first and then we'll find the components. Okay, so if it has a direction angle of 115 degrees, what quadrant are we in? Second quadrant because 115 is between 90 and 180, closer to 90. And its magnitude is 6. We want to find its components. So let's see here. I think I let the x be purple. So uh, the x component is the magnitude, 6, times the cosine of the angle. the numbers 6 cosine of 115 so that's negative 2.536 that should make sense because we're in the second quadrant in the second quadrant x coordinates are negative correct so our y-coordinate would be the magnitude times the sine of the angle. All I have to do is change cosine to sine in my calculator. And we get that the y-component is approximately 5.438. Again, that makes sense. My y-coordinates are positive in the second quadrant. And if I go a little bit further, just making sure that my answer makes sense, my y component should be greater just in sheer magnitude. Okay, forget the negatives for a second, but 5 is bigger than 2 because, as I mentioned before, 115 is closer to 90 degrees than it is to 180. So this vector is more vertical than it is horizontal. Okay, so. I point that out because when we start doing application problems, um, if you take a second to make sure that your answer makes sense, you'll, you'll catch some uh, careless mistakes. Um, so I just wanted to point that out, okay? Now, um, what if we're given the components and we're asked for the magnitude? It's just like the Pythagorean theorem, guys, okay? Because the magnitude's the hypotenuse, you square the x component, you square the y component, they're the two legs, add them together and take the square root, and that's your magnitude. Now, you gotta be careful. We're squaring numbers that could potentially be negative. Remember, and that's why I definitely put parentheses around this, if you square a negative number, either A, just don't type the negative into your calculator, or B, make sure you have parentheses around it because that will mess up your answer. I don't know how many times it, it happens over and over again, no matter how many times I mention it. Put parentheses around those negative numbers when you square them. Okay, so we can find the magnitude because it's the hypotenuse. Okay? Don't look at this as another formula to memorize. Just think about it. The components are the legs of a right triangle. <coughs> so the magnitude's the hypotenuse. You're just finding the hypotenuse of a right triangle. That's literally all you're doing. Yes, ma'am. Um, the pointy brackets, okay. Um, 3, 2 is not representing the point 3, 2. It's representing the vector that has a horizontal component of 3 and a vertical component of 2. So that's in the first quadrant. We need to find the magnitude and the direction angle. Okay, so magnitude, it's, it's easy, straightforward. Okay, magnitude is the square root of the x component squared plus the y component squared. 
So that's the square root of 9 plus 4, which is the square root of 13, which is somewhere between 3 and 4. Yes, Jessica? Because x and y are positive. Um, square root of 13, just because I want to know the decimal approximation, it's about 3.6. Okay, so this vector is approximately 3.6 units long. I want to know the angle, so I'm going to do the inverse tangent of y over x. It's always y over x. So inverse tangent of 2 over 3, and that gives me an angle of approximately 33.7 degrees. That's in the first quadrant, okay? I should always make sure that the angle that the calculator gives me is the angle where my vector is, and you'll see why in the next example. And I'll explain a little bit more in a second. Yes, Kate? Yep, that's that angle right there. Let's look at one where they're both negative. Negative 2, negative 5, that's in the third quadrant. Negative x, negative y, third quadrant. Um, it is closer to the negative y-axis than it is the negative x-axis because its y-component is greater than its x-component. So I know to draw it as a steeper line there. Its magnitude. All I have to do is square the x, square the y. So that's 4 plus 25, which is the square root of 29, somewhere between 5 and 6. Uh, about 5.4. Okay, if I want to find theta, I do the inverse tangent of the y over the x. And the calculator says 68.2. Now before I just put that down on my paper as my final answer, I need to take a second and see if that makes sense. 68.2 is not in the third quadrant, but I know that that's where my vector is because my x-coordinate is negative and my y-coordinate is negative. Well, why on earth would the calculator tell me that it's 68.2? Well, think about this for a second. What's the result when you divide a negative by a negative? Positive. Where is the first place that tangent is positive? Which quadrant? The first quadrant. So what your calculator does is it crunches this number, it gets the positive result, and then it says, okay, so where's the tangent? Positive 2.5. Well, the first answer it's going to be, it starts right here, and it goes through the first quadrant. So this is actually a reference angle. Okay? This number right here I have to use as a reference angle. Remember the reference angles. That's why we learned that. That's actually this right here, but that's not my direction angle. What do I need to do to find the entire angle here? Add 180 to that, okay? Because I'm 68.2 degrees past 180, so I need to add 180 degrees to that answer. So the direction angle is 248. Point two degrees, not 68.2 degrees. Okay? So you've got to be careful. That will happen when you're in the third quadrant. It will also happen when you're in the second quadrant because the tangent's also negative in the fourth quadrant. So what your character does is it looks in the first quadrant first, it looks in the fourth quadrant first if the angle is negative. Um, so uh, we'll see some more examples.